8th generation Honda Accord. Don't forget to check the video description. I'll have links to everything that I'm using. Drive up ramps. So you'll need a good pair of ramps for this process. Go ahead and put them right next to the front wheels on your vehicle and back the vehicle out. Then you're gonna lay these down in the position that the wheels are in and try to keep them aligned if possible. Ideally, you would have a spotter for this whole process, but if you're doing it all by yourself, this is the process that I use. Go ahead and get in your vehicle and drive up to the base of your ramps and give it a nice kick to make sure it's in the treads of those tires. Then go ahead and get in the vehicle and you're gonna put it in a low gear, drive up slowly, and once you feel yourself go over the top, immediately brake, put it in park, and apply the emergency brake. Engine flush. So we'll use a few products here. The main one is Liquimali Engine Flush. We use a cheap oil, Mobile One, Zero W20. And then this is the oil we'll end up with, a 5W30 Triax with additional wear protection. And we'll have a Fram 20,000 mile synthetic oil filter. You're gonna need a simple ratchet and a 17 millimeter socket for the oil drain plug. Gonna get under the vehicle, open the cap on your oil drain pan, put it into position, and you'll sort of aim it at the U shape within the plastic shielding, and you'll find the oil drain plug is right in the base of that U, I guess you would call it. Now go ahead and loosen it with your 17 millimeter. Once you break the bolt, you can hand loosen it the rest of the way. And remember the oil really shoots out a lot further than you might expect at first. So you're gonna put that oil drain pan a little bit farther back. And here it comes. There we go. Now you can go up top, go ahead and loosen the cap on the engine and it'll just drain a little faster that way. Now, if you look inside the engine, do you see you can see bare metal there? It's shiny. If you see brown or yellow varnish, that's how you know that the engine is not as clean as it should be and that's what really merits an engine flush. Now we're gonna use the existing crush washer on the oil drain plug here because we're doing a flush. There's no sense to put in a new crush washer or a new oil filter yet until after the flush is done. So we're gonna hand tighten it and then we'll just make it snug. Remember, we don't want to twerk this down or get it really tight because we're just going to flush more oil out of it anyway. Go ahead and go in your manual, find the capacity. It should be 4.2 US quarts, including the filter. Now this is a five quart mobile one. You don't have to be exact with it. Basically just put four quarts in there and you can just sort of look at the bottom of the oil and see that we're at about 4.2 anyway. Now go ahead and clean your stuff up. I mean, you don't wanna to make too big of a mess here, but once you get about four quarts in there, then you can add the engine flush. Always read the directions on this before you just throw it in your engine. But basically we're gonna add this and we'll run the vehicle for 10 minutes for the entire cleaning process to take place. And since we drained it first and put new oil in, it'll get even cleaner. So here we go at 1136. We have the car on, and at 11.46, we turn the car off. Obviously, the garage door is open and we have good ventilation. Make sure you have good ventilation before you do this. So now we're going to break the drain bolt here, and we're gonna also let the engine cool for about 20 minutes before we drain the oil out, or it'll be too hot. And here we go, we're gonna drain out this oil. And it's the same thing where you can go and take the uh, cap off. But this is the old drain plug. You see how it's a lot flatter and it has grooves and that's the new one. We're gonna use a new drain plug here. Once everything has come out, we're gonna go ahead and put that back on. Remember, we're just gonna hand tighten it at first and then we can torque it down. And if you're interested in the actual torque specs, it's 33 foot pounds. But typically I just get this really snug. It's not necessarily something you have to torque down. Now you can loosen the filter with one of these tools. It can be handy or you can use sort of uh, a different type. I have a Tecton that I use a lot. This one is specifically suited for the Honda Accord. When you're adding an oil filter, generally speaking, you should hand tighten it. Don't use a tool to tighten it because it just makes it too difficult for it to get off after you're done. Now that we've removed the old oil filter and all of the engine oil is out, we can move on. Oil change with additive. 
So we've got the Tri-X 5W30 Enhanced Wear Protection, Ceratec Boron Treatment, and our Fram 20,000 mile ultra synthetic filter with our 17 millimeter and our ratchet. Let's start with the oil filter. So remember, you're just gonna try to put this in the threading. You should lightly spin it and it should just catch. Don't try to force this. Once it's in the threading, you can spin it and it should spin really nicely because there's still some oil that will help it glide. Then you're going to tighten it with your hand strength only. Do not use that oil filter tool that we used to remove the old oil filter. Only use your own hand strength. Next up, we're gonna take our Triax 5W30 and it's one US gallon or four quarts. Just put the whole thing in there. And we're gonna have a Ceratec boron treatment that we'll use after this and it'll get us to about that 4.2 capacity that we want in our engine. Remember to shake this vigorously before you add it. It kind of goes in looking like a cappuccino. And the boron protection, it just really increases the wear protection within the engine. Go ahead and put the vehicle in the on position. Don't turn the engine on, just put it in the on position. Go ahead and push that little nodule to the right until you get to oil life. And you're gonna hold it down for 10 seconds until it starts to flash. And once it starts to flash, you're gonna release and then you're gonna push it back in for another 10 seconds. So now that it's flashing, I'm gonna release and I'll push it back in for another 10 seconds. And what this does is it resets the oil life to 100%. For newer Hondas, you actually have to use an onboard diagnostics tool to reset the oil life. So drive around and then check the dipstick. It's pretty straightforward. Make sure the vehicle is driven for about 20 minutes and also cooled down for 20 minutes before you do the dipstick check. Get a towel or a rag, paper towel. Just make sure you clean that dipstick off so there's not any residual oil on it. And then you're gonna put it right back in and pull it right back out. Remember, we did an engine flush and then an oil change. So this engine oil is gonna be basically clear and you're gonna to have to use a light to see the level. Remember, you want the oil all the way up to that second hole, which it is, it's at a perfect level. Check underneath the car, make sure there's no leaking going on, but you've effectively finished your job. If you wanna see more, don't forget to like, subscribe, and enable notifications.